Good morning, everyone, and welcome to um, our first RSATS Club of 2024. Um, today, I want to start with like a beginner friendly session, or that's how it starts, but um, you can always get advanced soon after. Um, and I'm going to be talking about our studio setup, um, some our studio projects, and some keyboard shortcuts that you might want to be aware of. So as usual, you can find here the link to a Google Doc where I put some notes. Um, so that's what the Google Doc that I have open over here. Um, if you want to install some packages, you can do this with this these commands over here. Um, but in this case, it's not as necessary um, to, to follow and understand some of the material I'll be talking about today. Um, so the first thing I'll... I was, I'm gonna I'm gonna show is some slides from the Building Tidy Tools workshop. Um, I took that workshop in 2019. Um, however, um, I cannot find the materials from 2019 publicly up um, anymore. Um, when they shared them to us, it was a Dropbox directory. Um, it wasn't a GitHub repository. Um, you can find over here the, the link to the 2020 version of this workshop, but the particular slides that I'm going to show to you today um, are not, I couldn't see them in, in the 2020 version. So, um, cool. and so um, even though that workshop was about like building tidy tools, which is like building our packages, um, uh, the very first um, uh, presentation they have talks about um, our studio. Um, and it kind of makes sense. This was a worship taught at the R studio conference. Uh, but also, um, um, in a lot of ways, our studio is pretty nice if you're an R user. Um, of course, uh, you don't have to use R studio if you don't want to. Um, there's other IDEs. Um, in, what does IDE stand for? Interactive Development Environment. All right, cool. I don't know if you heard Nick, <laughs> but um, he, yeah, IDE, he said it stands for Interactive Development Environment. Um, but the idea is if you do use a, this IDE called our studio, you try to really um, um, master it, right? Like it really good at understanding uh, its features. So um, a lot of you have seen our studio before. It kind of looks like this, where um, if you open it, you have like four different panels. Uh, you can have your R code in one panel, your console in another. Uh, in another panel, you can be looking at things that you have loaded in your R environment, uh, your history of commands, and, for example, a terminal connection. Um, and then on the bottom right, in this case, we have like um, a file explorer, but also you can, you can look at plots and other things, help files, etc. So there's a, a lot of ways you can change that setup. Um, but um, one of the commands that uh, you should really, a keyboard shortcut really, that you should try to remember is the, if you're on a Mac, that would be the command key. Um, if you're on a Windows machine, that would be control. Um, so command or control and then the up arrow. If you do that on the console panel, only on the console panel, you're gonna be able to look back at your history of commands. And so in this case, um, we can see on the console, uh, they typed the two letters GG. Um, and so if you do that, um, command up, which will, you, will show you all of the commands you have typed uh, recently that start with the letter GG. And so that's a great way of um, searching your command history pretty fast. Um, and then a lot of times what you want to do is maybe edit things, particularly if you're talking about a plotting command, maybe you just want to um, you know, change the color or fix the type of things like that. Another keyboard shortcut that you really should uh, remember a lot is um, the command or control key, depending on Mac or Windows, um, 
plus the enter key. And so if you do that, we see here that the uh, mouse cursor is on the um, code, um, on the source code panel. And it's uh, in line number three after the letter R from star. Um, so if you do that, what this will do is that it will execute the code that you have selected. Now, depending on your configuration of RStudio, that will run the full code chunk of related commands, which in this case, that's what's happening, is running lines three to six uh, in one go. Or you might have it configured such that it only runs a particular line at a time. Now, um, this will um, make you a lot more efficient compared to, for example, selecting the code, copying it, then selecting the console uh, window and then pasting the code. Uh, there's a similar keyboard shortcut for uh, working with the terminal window. Um, you just add an alt to, to all of this. So alt, command, enter. Um, it's just three keys. And so, uh, yes, you'll be using both hands uh, on your keyboard, um, but that will uh, make you a lot more efficient just pressing this keyboard shortcuts um, in, compare, in comparison with copying and pasting code. Another one that uh, you might not be as familiar with is um, several, uh, actually not only our studio, but like several programs have this feature where um, let's say you select, um, you put your cursor on the, on the right side of the A on line number one, um, after that, what you can do is maintain the Alt key pressed, uh, and then press your key, uh, your uh, mouse key, and then drag the mouse down, um, in this case, straight down. And you're going to end up in this case, um, with eight, uh, prompts. Um, so that means that like, whatever you do, for example, if you press the delete key, um, uh, that will delete the letters um, that we have on all, all of those eight lines at the same time. Um, and so this can be useful at times when you there's something in particular you want to do across multiple things. I use this, I use this actually also when copy paste in, uh, for example, some output from the terminal window. Um, let's say I'm listing the files in the directory and then I want to uh, remove parts of um, of what showed up. Um, so uh, in this particular example, what they did is they went to the beginning of the line, added a, um, a double quotation symbol. Then after the letter, they added another double quotation symbol and then added a comma. Um, I said this is how like they're taking some letters and making it into like potentially a vector um, that they can type. And so um, there's a lot of keyboard shortcuts um, and the keyboard shortcut quick reference feature is very useful. Um, since that's a slide, I'm gonna actually go to a newer version of RStudio um, and show it to you. So I'll go to help and then under help, we can see that there's a keyboard shortcuts help. It actually has a keyboard shortcut if you wanted to remember it which in uh, this case, it would be Alt, Shift, and K. Uh, so Alt, Shift, K, we can see the keyboard shortcut um, guide. And it's broken up by sections. Um, they, they, try, they try to group them by like things that are related to each other. So for example, um, uh, if you're debugging, there's a few debugging related commands and they're all on this, Debug section. Um, if you're making our packages um, or um, you know um, rendering some meter files, so you're building really something. All of those commands are over here on the build um, section. Um, now, um, in, in all of this, um, there's, a, there's a long list of keyboard shortcuts. Um, one of them that um, I struggle to find at times is the keyboard shortcut for the pipe operator. 
And that's because I'm like, well, I don't really see a section heading that is like, um, you know, um, for code um, keyboard shortcuts uh, for writing code. But it's actually under the source editor. Um, and we can find it over here, insert pipe operator um, near the bottom. Um, so a lot of you use the tidyverse and uh, you might wanna be using that keyboard shortcut for um, um, inserting the pipe operator instead of typing in it. Um, so it's supposed to be less uh, keyboard keys at that point. Um, some that I do like, for example, uh, or that I like to use is this one over here, um, control period. Uh, that's like, let's say you have a lot of files in your, um, in your project and um, uh, it could take you a bit of time to go to the uh, file manager window and like locate the file in, in the project. But you, if you already kind of know the name or if you're in particular, if you're writing a package and you know the function, um, you can use this keyboard shortcut and that way you can find um, related files. Hmm. Uh, but overall, I would say the ones that I use the most are um, um, uh, the comment on comment the um, re-ident lines, reformat code. Um, I use those a lot because um, um, particularly the comment on comment line, that one I use it when I uh, paste some output from the console um, into my R script. Let's say I ran a table command. I just wanted to see how many um, nuclei I have for each cell type in a particular object. Um, so I run that table command, copy the output from the console, paste it in, into my uh, script. Um, and then after that, I uh, select all of those lines, press the comment on comment line keeper shortcut. Um, and sometimes if it's not like all the way aligned to the left, then I press the re-invent lines uh, keyboard shortcut. Um, that's um, something I frequently do. Another thing I also frequently do is that I select uh, some lines of code and then press the reformat code keyboard shortcut just to make sure the code is like more easy to read um, and nicely indented and all of that. Um, but there's a lot, there's a lot of other keyboard shortcuts over here. Um, and so, yeah. Um, um, here there were some exercises based on that, um, but I kind of already gave you the answer to two of them. Um, cool. Um, next, um, next I wanted to tell you about um, some material that comes from the what they forgot to teach you about R. Um, this is was originally a workshop for the R Studio conference. There's also a website, a little book about it now. Um, and so uh, we can see the material written, uh, like explained with text over here. Um, or we can also find this on a few set of slides. So in particular, this is the link to the 2020 version of that worship. Um, I also put the link to how um, uh, some people from Mexico translated this worship into Spanish if um, that appeals to anyone. And so I'm gonna open this PDF and I put the link to the day where it came from. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's a lot of, um, uh, wait, there's a lot of things here, but I'm jumping to this particular slide. And so this is a bit of um, a little bit annoying because a lot of people from our studio that work there, they teach you to change the default settings of our studio. So, um, and um, uh, my intuition is that uh, the R studio default settings match the R default settings. Um, and they made that decision at the beginning and um, um, we're scared that, I mean, 
I'm not scared wasn't the right word where um um maybe anticipating that if they had a different set of default settings for R, then people would um uh, maybe complain to them about this. Um and so if we go to tools, global options. Um there is this setting which is about uh, restore the dot R data into the workspace at startup. And so R by default um, will uh, save the workspace to an R data file on the exit. Um, and that will be the default is always and as such the companion setting for that is to always restore the data. Um, that's how like you get R Studio when you install it from scratch and um and a lot of R related things. Um, the problem with that is that um, if you always restore this hidden file because it it starts with a period, uh, you won't see it on your file system unless you have the option selected for looking at hidden files. So you wouldn't even notice it that that file exists, it's particularly if you're just starting with R. Um, you will notice that it exists on your computer. It's always going to load. And then you might say like, okay, why is like R taking forever to load? Um, and that might be because you save some really large files on that workspace. Um, and so that's going to be using a lot of your computer resources, a lot of your memory. Um, and it's just not going to make your experience a happy one. Now, um, let's say you just turn that off. Uh, of like restoring the R data file um, into workspace at startup. Um, at that point, you, you'll have a nice experience loading R, uh, but then every time you exit R, it's gonna take a while to exit because it's gonna be saving it, all of your files that you have loaded, all of your objects loaded into a disk. And so we say this, um, we said this to never. Um, you can always use the ask option, but in general, you're gonna say no. Um, so these two settings over here um, are um, some settings that uh, are non-default for our studio that we, that there's a lot of good reasons for um, changing them. Um, there's some other reasons that we've seen in the past on, a, on, a, on an RStock Club session where we saw a, a presentation, a keynote by uh, Jenny Bryan at the R Studio conference. Um, and in that keynote, Jenny is explaining how if you do have those settings on, you, you can run into all of these weird errors that are gonna be hard to debug because if you're loading data and that data needs a package for it, you might always be loading a particular package without noticing it uh, yourself. So that's a setting that I um, highly recommend changing. Another one is um, you should really be restarting your R session often. Um, um, and the key for this is don't run like code from a script number one, and then on the same console session, run code from script number two. Because if you do that, that's not how your script is um, organized. Um, that's not how your commands are saved for future reference. Um, and so you might create a result that you cannot actually reproduce later because maybe you didn't realize that there was some interaction between your two scripts. Um, one of them changed an object um, that you weren't expecting to change. Um, uh, and um, in general, this also incentivizes writing short scripts. You don't want to write a long, a huge long script where you're running a lot of code. And then um, uh, if we're asking you to restart R frequently, um, you are probably going to be incentivized to not do that actually. Um, um, so you start if you start to write like short scripts, it's not a big problem then for you to actually be restarting R uh, frequently. Um, so I also typically do this um, whenever I'm switching between script number one and script number two. Um, um, I know that sometimes this can be a bit um, 
um, of extra work if, if the data that you're loading takes a little bit of time to load. Um, so of course, there's always some exceptions, but uh, um, in general, uh, you do want to be restarting your R session frequently. Um, cool. Uh, so those are the two slides from that, um, that presentation that I wanted to highlight right now. Uh, then there's another um, uh, PDF over here from um, that same workshop. If, um, okay, this one I do want to open. So um, this complicated diagram is showing everything that happens when you actually open R. Um, there's a lot of stuff that uh, happens behind the scenes. Some environment variables are set, some scripts are set, and then the session is actually configured um, and all of that. Um, so you can kind of see a little bit here, we have the R data file and uh, and that uh, R data file gets loaded if it exists and if you have that setting uh, on your R Studio window. So there's there's a lot more stuff that happens here. I'm, I'm not gonna explain all of it, but um, some of the things that um, are worth highlighting are the .R environment and the .R profile. So those are two um, text files um, where you can configure some settings. Um, this R profile can exist at a particular project or on your like um, uh, home directory. I typically only have one on my home directory. And so this is how you can configure how you want to load some packages or do some things every time you start R. And uh, there are some reasons why you wanna be able to do that. Um, um, we don't use the R environment much, um, but we do use the R profile. Now, there's this painful thing for both of those files, always have to end with a new line. And so this is actually a setting that you might want to change on RStudio and make sure that all source files end with a new line. Um, so RStudio will help you with that. Um, um, you'll also notice that uh, the screenshot says that they're using po POSIX LF for line ending conversion. And I always change this myself to, to POSIX LF. That's, this is not the default, um, but that LF uh, um, is the um, line ending conversion style that is the one we use in Linux. And a lot of us work with Linux. Um, if you have like, for example, Windows line endings, then Win uh, Linux commands are gonna fail um, sometimes when they're trying to read those files, et cetera. Um, cool. So um, as related to the R profile and all of that, we have on, on the team documentation website, um, an example R profile uh, that I, this is based on what I use. And so you can see here that I have like, if the terminal window is uh, one that supports colors, I try to load the color out package. Um, um, I like to write a blog post with blog down. So there's information uh, for blog down there. Um, um, if I wanna be developing packages, I wanna load dev tools, use this, test that. Um, protocol for Git, uh, where I want to install my packages from. Um, if I'm making new packages, I want um, use this to know who, you know, my name, my org ID, my email, all of that. Um, some options for BioCDs, also for developing packages. Then this one is one that I highly recommend you add if you're gonna be using the styler package, which is how to uh, style um, your scripts. And so um, I've told you in a separate sessions of, uh, about BioCDs and BioCD style. Um, I also have some other things, like I like to use the RS Themes package, which, which is RStudio Themes. Um, 
this allows me to like um, have a few different color backgrounds for my code, etc. Um, and so there's a lot of um, information here on that R profile. Um, um, and if you're just getting started, you could basically like copy a lot of this. Um, and later on, we can teach you how to, you know, what are the parts you might want to edit. Um, cool. So what are some other RStudio configuration changes that I make? Um, so let's see, I changed this workspace stuff um, um, on their code. Uh, I set the tab width to four. That's because Bioconductor expects four uh, spaces per tab instead of two. Uh, so the default here is two. Uh, I do not have the auto detect code indentation set on. Um, um, and that's because I don't want it to like, if I'm pasting stuff to change the indentation automatically for me. Um, I do like that if I start the parentheses that it will uh, close the parentheses for me. So I do have that setting on. Um, then I soft wrap my R source files. Um, um, let's see, something that I like on the, on, on the display. Um, these are not turned on by default, but I like, I, I like to highlight R function calls. I also like to use rainbow parentheses. So that, that means you have like nested parentheses. Uh, let's say the outermost will be red, the innermost will be blue. And so that way you can, you can see them more easily. Um, um. So those are some of the things that I have there. Um, 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 mm -hmm. Here in their code saving, this is where I have a POSIX LF setting on. on. Um, 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 so that's mostly of, of what I do. Um, uh, um, you could also change your layout of the panels and other things. Um, um, but there are some other um, RStudio default options you might want to change. Um, so we already talked about the workspace where you want to make sure that it doesn't um, load the R data file every time. And you want to make sure that it never saves it. Um, um, for the history, um, I also um, don't save the history. Uh, um, uh, and that's because if you save the history, it's going to create this .r history file on the directory where you're working at. And later on for version control, that could be a bit tricky because it creates this file. Um, that sometimes people will version control unintentionally, and that will lead to problems later on, a bunch of uh, git merge conflicts and stuff like that. Um, uh, even though like, you know, having your history in a way is a bit nice uh, in other ways. Um, cool. Um, so those are some of the um, non-default settings for our studio. And so finally, we can look at the RStudio cheat sheet. Um, um, it's over here. Get a cheat sheet. Um, and so this, it's nice if you want to download the PDF file and print it nicely. Um, it, ex it explains a lot of times, like what are all of these icons, what they mean, et cetera, um, what you can do with it. So there's a there's a lot of features that R Studio has, um, um, and uh, one of them is the R Studio add-ins. And so, for example, because I load on my, um, um, I have installed the Styler package that adds this set of add-ins over here under Styler. We see that over here, the the name of the package in capital letters. Um, and so if I start a new file, a new R script, and like write um, um, uh, 
and then just write this. Um, I can now go to the add-ins and then under styler, uh, style active file. And so we see there that that automatically changed the equal assignment when it left arrow. Um, 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 and so that, that's an add-in that I, I frequently use. Um, and so a lot of times before that, I will like select everything with command A. Then we just saw the keyboard shortcut for command shift A, which is the one for um, um, reformatting code. That is, um, um, we can see it under the little one. Um, so that's something I do first. And then second, I do the styler style active file uh, plugin. And so you didn't really see much here because I, they re, um, the reformat code didn't add much. But let's say I have like, um, Right, all of that. I have a pretty long line. It's already soft wrapping into the next one. I com press Command A to select all of it, then Command Shift A to reformat the code. That did break it up, and I try to um, align it. And then next, I can do add-ins, um, styler, style, active file, and that that improves it even a little bit more. Right. Um, and the idea of like um, using the same things for uh, styling code um, is that at that point, um, it doesn't matter how you write the code. Like each of us have different styles for writing code, um, uh, but we end up with a uniform product in the end. Then that means that if you're sharing code across people, uh, because we're all gonna be used to reading the same type of uh, formatted code, um, it'll, we'll have an easier time understanding code from another person. Um, and it, this is also based on the principle that space in code is like a, uh, like giving um, some breathing room uh, when you're like speaking and things like that. Um, so it makes it a lot easier to understand. Kind of like, you know, if I do the extreme of like removing all of the space, um, You're gonna have a much harder time understanding I even deleted their uh, double quotation so if you, if you see that line you're gonna be like oh uh, what's happening here right the so command a to select everything command shift a to reformat it and then um, styler style active file um, that's the sequence of what i do to then end up with like nicely formatted code that will be a lot easier to understand cool um so that's everything i had prepared today um and i hope you enjoyed this this intro session